This is GABNET, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's Alex. It's the Ramble. We're until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States. From New York, New York, the city's so nice they named it twice. Okay, yeah, you've heard that one before. How are you? Good to see you. Uh, nice to see you uh, hanging out here and hanging in on our little program. Uh, we go until midnight tonight, and my eyes have been burning up a storm today. And then I've been, my nose has been dripping. And um, if I didn't know it, I think I'd have co. I had COVID, but I don't. So I just, it's just like the, I don't know, my eyes just with this, with this, uh, it just they burn like crazy. Uh, I don't know. Wait, we'll see if if this eye thing helps. I don't know if it will or not. You know, not for that doesn't help with allergies folks but uh you know uh we uh what we do on this program uh is we um uh usually on uh, thursday we've been talking to somebody we like talking to and we feel it's important for him to be on the program so we found a way of getting him to come back and love us once again ladies and gentlemen here's robert natali hello robert hello alex how are you how are you? Talk a little good. louder. Can you turn good. your mic up at all? You can't. I guess you can. What's what is it? Can you I'm turn sorry. up your microphone a little bit? Sure, is that sure, sure, sure. Is, is that, that better? A little more. A little more. How's that? Yeah, that's fine. That's good. Okay, great. Anyway, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How about yourself? What's new in your life? Um, had a colonoscopy and endoscopy oh, this morning. Oh, wait a minute. Both? Yes. We. At my the, doctor does it where he shakes hands in the middle. Well, no, what I often thought is I wanted to get, what I wanted to get was an endoscopy and a cystoscopy at the same time, yeah. along with a cystoscopy, there you go. which goes up your penis, yeah. and then get all of them to see if they can see each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always tell them to shake hands in the middle somewhere. Yeah, why do you, it all, well, I guess it's okay. It, it's not a bad idea to do it all in one time, I guess, because you're no. out and, you know. I always tease them. I have some knee and back issues. I always tease them. Listen, while I'm under, why don't you just put me on the rack and you know get it all done, do an oil yeah, change while yeah, you're at it. Yeah. Did they find anything? Is everything okay with you? Everything is okay. I, I have some ongoing difficulties. Have had for a while. Don't really don't want to get into it too much. I don't like to give voice to illnesses, but uh, suffice to say, we're on the right track. Oh, okay. But I mean. Uh... Uh, uh, did, the cystos- did, did the colonoscopy come out okay? Uh, yes, overall. Overall, yeah. There okay. are there are ongoing difficulties, but oh, yes, overall, I see. Okay, so I'm just trying to fig- I'm just trying to figure out what area. See, yeah. What area the well, difficulties if it are? Were, if it were in your if you if you got a it got your gastro, you know, you, you, you they go into your look at your esophagus with a yes. Um, uh, what do you call it? Oscopy. Uh, the endoscopy. Endoscopy. And in that case, they're looking for, I guess. Well, they look for they look for uh, erosion. Inflammation. Yeah, yeah inflammation. Es- esophageal difficulties right. because of maybe GERD or, or excess acid. If you and, have a lot of GERD, yeah, gastro yeah. something reflux disorder or yeah. whatever. Uh, like you, you know, you 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 bring up acid a lot. Okay, yeah. that could be a precursor to esophageal cancer. Yes, which exactly. A friend of, which that. a friend of mine died of, and I think that she died of it because she didn't do anything about it. You well, know? yeah, I'm I'm in a position where I'm uh, prescribed to take this test once a year mm-hmm. uh, because there have been some scary moments in the past, and so just as uh, a you know as a prophylactic measure yeah we do it once a year i so took it do you do you take a, the, uh, here we are once again alex bennett's waiting room 
Yes. Uh, 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 they give you stuff to help with the gastrointestinal <laughs> industrial reflux. <laughs> That's all, folks. Yeah. Do they give um, you? They're, they're, yes, and yes, and and frankly, um, frankly, it has it's been mostly ineffective for a long, long time. Oh, really? So oh, okay. We're changing course of action because what I've what I've done over the years is I've taken uh, uh, prophylactically. Uh, mm -hmm. like uh, Prilosec mm -hmm. uh, or I call it Folosec because there's a there's a generic version of it at uh, Costco yeah. that's much cheaper than Prilosec yeah. and I take it every day you know uh, so that uh, you know I prevent that acid reflux and I haven't had acid reflux as a result I'm, I'm very lucky that way right and well. so far as my colonoscopies are concerned you know, my my doctor, I think, felt now at my age, I don't need them anymore. Well, that's good. Well, because here's the here. And this is the depressing thing, folks, about getting older. OK, yeah. they feel that if I got if they found polyps now, it would take 10 years for them to become dangerous. Yeah. And that I'll probably be dead before that. That's their philosophy. Yeah, they're pretty much giving up on you. They don't know me. I have no plans to go anywhere. Because I was watching a documentary tonight on, on us going to Mars and when we're going to do it and how long it's going to take us to build uh, cities there and things like that. And it said that by 2026, they plan to land the first five starships there to start uh, colonizing the planet. Yeah. Now, I think I can make it to then. I'll be 86. I they think I can behind. make it. You I'm know? sure you will be. Well, I don't know. I'm I'm just getting so I'm so tired every day. You, you know? know, my grandmother in Italian used to say, "Those that complain live forever." That could so be. You got a shot. Yeah, but I mean, like I walked a mile today and I was exhausted. You know, it's, it's you were just, tired. You weren't exhausted. Well, I it's it's I think it's the this pill I take, which you know, it it, it, it makes me clumsy as I walk. Okay. I kind of like have to watch my step. So anyway, so I had to go down to the Adam Clayton Powell Jr. office building. Wow, I'm impressed. Well, uh, yeah, where they have Keep a the pick, faith, they, baby. They have a, 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 a statue of Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Yeah, in the front of it, and I'm thinking, boy, a monument to a crook. Yeah, this he was is, as corrupt as the day is long. You want to talk about so, corrupt politicians? Yeah. See, he put the K in corrupt. Yes, he you did. Know? Yes, he did. Uh, and uh, I, I always am kind of bothered by that, especially since somebody hasn't come along since and gone, well, you know, he was always making out with the women and taking advantage of them and so on. Let's tear it down, okay? Yeah. We can go get Jefferson's statue down, but we're not going to take Adam Clayton Powell no. Jr. No, you know, his, I know. And in the meantime, there were so many wonderful activists in the Harlem neighborhood who, you know, helped with neighborhood food drive and voting registration and stuff, but they're nameless, faceless people. Mm -hmm. And so they don't get statues, unfortunately. No, but and they should. The, and they should. That's the nature of the world. Yeah, and uh, what was her name? The one around the Underground Railroad. Uh, oh, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. We have a Harriet Tubman statue yeah. uh, on, uh, uh, on St. Nicholas Avenue. Right. The, the, kind of an intersection there. Mm -hmm. And I always felt that there was something wrong with the statue because it reminds me, pardon me, folks, she looks like Mrs. Butterworth. Oh, Jesus. It, it's just the way it's shaped and everything. It looks like a Mrs. Butterworth bottle. Oh, my. Yeah. But uh, well, he's great on pancakes. So. Well, Harriet Tubman was worth having a statue. But why is it Adam? Why do I live on Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Yeah. Boulevard? In fact, so, I put Seventh Avenue on all my mail. It'll still oh, there get you to go. me. There yeah. You go. Yeah. So since I saw you last, I've read and heard some interesting stuff that we can talk about. Number yeah. one. Yeah. For, for those that like to. Uh, Excuse me if I'm doing this, but the only no, thing I can do to help the for, eyes. For those that like to deny climate change um mm. i read something fascinating this week they talked about uh, measuring uh june over junes in the past mm. and what they found i thought was just tremendously interesting they found that um 
temperature change happens and has happened throughout mankind. There have mm -hmm. been fluctuations, yeah. Yeah, but something. nothing quite as serious as this. And what they found was that Portland, Maine, um, in June, mm -hmm. had temperatures that Boston had 10 years ago. Boston had the temperatures New York had 10 years ago. Oh, wow. New York had the temperatures Atlanta had 10 years ago. And Atlanta had the temperatures that Miami had 10 years so ago. So it's all moving up. It, exactly. Yeah. Areas that, I mean, listen, Portland, Oregon, having temperatures in the 110s is absolutely unheard of. Mm-hmm. Um, they were also, I mean, just stop and think about you and I in the New York area currently. I've lived the first 60 years of my life, and I guarantee you that maybe I've seen two tornado watches in my life. Well, I've seen about five this summer, and the summer isn't half over. You know, it's absolutely ridiculous that we're getting tornado watches and warnings in the New York area. Yeah, that's terrible. We don't get rain anymore. Yeah. Do you notice? We get storms. We don't get like days. You're right. Of nice, You're right. Easy when rain. I get rain, when we get rain here, it's always accompanied by thunder. Yes, it is. And lightning and damaging winds and hail. We don't get just a steady, but beautiful, there is no such thing. Day. There is no such thing as global warming. You know that, don't you? Oh, no. I mean, no. They, they did, that's what they say. You know, oh, there's no global warming out there. Gee, we had a cold winter. A really again, cold winter. <laughs> once again, why is it one side of the aisle? You know, I still don't understand the connection. Don't we have a few Democrats out there that aren't vaccinated and do believe global warming doesn't exist? Honestly, do none that I know of. None that I know of either. Well, here's another, which brings me to the next issue, and that is the, the flap this week about Jim Jordan being removed from the committee to, to investigate January 6th. He shouldn't it be on it, me, because we know what he does when he's on a committee like that. He yeah, hijacks it. Well, in the first place, here's what I found funny. Yeah. About several days before January 6th, Jim Jordan was part of a group of people who admittedly Mm -hmm. attended a meeting with Donald Trump, the sole purpose of which was to decide how they could overturn the election. So in effect, putting him on the committee to investigate the insurrection would be similar to having an investigation of drug cartels and inviting El Chapo to well, sit on the panel. <laughs> you no, know? Worse than that, worse than that. It would be like having a uh, subcommittee on, say, the mob, mm -hmm. and uh, having a gangster, yeah, on yeah. the on the panel. Of course, because it, 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 this is someone you would otherwise uh, be subpoenaing, subpoenaing, yeah. subpoenaing, whatever it is. Uh, yeah. uh, bec uh, and in, in the case of Jim Jordan, he's somebody you would subpoena because he's got information about these meetings he had with Donald Trump. Yeah, he may have to testify, you know, like he may be a yes, co exactly. conspirator. So what does he do? Does he come off the dais and sit in the chair or what, yeah, exactly. what, what happens? Yeah. You know, and he who, changes hats. And yeah. who asks, then when it's time his turn to ask questions, does he ask himself questions? Right. Well, somebody made a good point and said that Part of the problem is that they keep calling it a bipartisan committee and what they should refer to it as, as a nonpartisan committee. You know, that in effect, parties yeah. should have nothing to do with this. This was an assault on the Capitol building, yeah. for the love of my. But anyway. But they're trying to say that Pelosi is out to gin this thing up and make it look like Trump did something wrong. Of course he did. Yeah, well, of course he did. I mean, come on. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, uh, did you did you see the the uh, did you hear the interview that he did with these reporters who did this oh, book yeah. on him, in which oh, he yeah. said, "Oh no, that was a love fest." Yeah, people were loving each other. Yeah, they were hugging and wonderful uh, people hugging each other, and they were being invited in by the guards oh, yeah. from the yeah. uh, from the from the Capitol. 
Uh, yeah, they were being invited in, I guess, as they trampled over the guards after hitting them with two by fours. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, think I mean, the... what, what, what world does Trump live in? They say yeah. he really lives in an imaginary world. He's really, well, he's really sick. You know, Alex, 20 years from now, God willing, I'm still alive. I think the enduring image of January 6th for me will be two parts. It'll be the guy inside the Capitol building brandishing a Confederate flag. I don't think I'll ever be able to erase that image from my mind. And yeah. the other is the guy with his feet up on Nancy Pelosi's desk. You know, like I think this is teenage behavior. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah, like, no. come on. Uh, it was a it was a terrible thing that went on. It looks like the military was more worried about it than anyone would like to believe. Yeah. Uh, they had plans in case Trump asked yeah. them to bring out the military to kind of overthrow the election and what they were yep. going to do and what they were going to do. I think they were all going to resign or refuse one or yes. the other. Uh, but, you know, they they were really worried that, yeah. th that he was capable. Of, just to even think that they were worried that he was capable of that. Yeah, it's, is it's scary very shit. scary. It really is. Very scary. On the, on the brighter note, I heard the other day that 10 current GOP House members mm -hmm. who have been critics of Donald Trump are out uh, raising, are out fundraising their opponents who are Trump acolytes. So maybe, just maybe, there are certain signs, including a couple we talked about last week and the week before, mm -hmm that maybe there's still a heartbeat, you know, in the old GOP. It could be. I mean, the only thing that really seems to bring any uh, uh, sensibility home is the feeling that one of these, any one of these politicians feels that he's not going to get reelected. Right. He yeah. will and do it anything. He would sell his mother to get reelected. It, okay. it all comes down to that. You so know, if they be... feel, if they feel that they're, you know, their adversaries are raising more. Oh, well, well, you're saying these are people who have kind of been anti Trump. Been and so they're getting money from their they're constituents. They're out raising their pro Trump opponents, oh. yes, within the GOP. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. So maybe, you know, there's a small crack in the fortress where it comes to the Trump GOP. Yeah. The, the, you know, the question is really going to boil down to the fact of are these people uh, capable of, of, of some kind of decency? You know, here, here, here's the latest thing I heard, and this is just really disgusting. Uh, they don't know how many of our congressmen and senators on the Republican side have gotten vaccinated. And yeah. the reason they don't know is when asked the question, they all refuse to answer. Yeah. And they probably it's because they're afraid. You well, know, because they probably did get the vaccination. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, I mean, um, Rand Paul's very happy to say he didn't get it. But then again, right. he had COVID. So he has right. a certain protection there. Right. On the other hand, as Alan pointed out on the show last night, Mitch McConnell, mm -hmm. I, I almost choked to say something positive about old Mitch, but... Uh, Mitch McConnell actually said that people should get vaccinated, which I thought was, well, you know, like earth earth shattering. He took news. a while. Uh, well, please, you, you know, know. Well, don't let the door hit you. But yeah, no, but he t he took a while, uh, but he he did do it. He did finally yeah. say it. Uh, but how much is that going to help? Do you I think? don't know how many followers does Mitch McConnell truly have. You know, like, I don't really know anyone personally who says, you know, I wasn't a fan of Trump. I'm not a fan of Kevin McCarthy, but I love that Mitch McConnell. You know, I, I just don't know those He's people. irrepressible. Yeah. He's a yeah. hunk. Uh, yeah. 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 Johnny he, No Chin, we call him. Uh, he's, he has the sourest look of any human being outside yeah. of Reverend Al Sharpton. Yeah, you ever notice Al Sharpton has a very, he just, he can't get that sour look off his face yeah. as hard as he tries. He could be laughing, it would still be. 
Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. The other thing I read, which is probably of more interest to you than it would be to me, because I'm not really a TV or movie guy at all, yeah. but I read that Netflix, for the first time, actually went below 50% of streaming activity in the last quarter. And that actually they lost 430,000 customers over the second quarter in the United States and Canada. Really? And industry insiders blamed three things. They said that... Well, let, one, let me guess what they are. Yeah, go ahead. Number one, the programming sucks. Well, because of COVID, they weren't able to produce new programming. Well, they, they did. They did. But it, uh, I'll explain why their programming sucks later. The other reason, I would say, is because of their price increase. It's because other companies have outpriced them, like Paramount, Disney. And the third was consolidation within the industry. Mm -hmm. You know, that some of the larger firms are ganging up, so to speak. Well, they Netflix. all want to get in on that Netflix uh, juggernaut. They want to get yeah. in on that money. Uh, Netflix, we might add that, I don't know, how many did you say they lost? A half a million? Something up like close that? to it, 400,000 well, plus. Yeah. But they were up to 210 million subscribers? Yes, worldwide. worldwide. 66 million in America, believe it or not. All yeah. the rest of it is worldwide. Yeah, so losing a half a million is like really a pimple on your ass. Exactly. Okay. And here's the other thing that was interesting about that story was that Netflix has very quietly hired an executive yeah. who used to be a big shot. His name is Mike something or other. He used to be a big shot at EA, Electronic Arts. Yeah. And the reason they hired him is because Netflix is very strongly moving toward going to gaming so that you can go to Netflix and suddenly play, you know, Sonic the Hedgehog or whatever it is that people play yeah. online. Well, I think that uh, the thing is that, uh, that uh, I was trying to remember who number two is. I think number two is, jeez, uh, I, I think. I don't know who number two is now. Nor do I. Would it I, be Amazon but I do Prime know. I do know guess. that coming up, I think third or something is Disney Plus, right? Because they have they have got about 110 million that yeah. they've gotten in very short amount of time. I mean, it's some good programming over there. Uh, HBO Max is having a problem gaining traction. So that's where the article started. Was yeah. about HBO Max kind of treading water and not doing as well as well they it's hope. not that it's doing badly i think they've got something like 60 million or something like that but yeah. they they're just not gaining okay right. well the thing that the article pointed out was that the downturn for netflix is against the fact that people were shut in over the last year and you would think they relied upon Netflix more than ever before. So yeah. it's a curious yeah. thing yeah. that they would lose subscribership in such a period of time. The other thing that I thought was funny in the article was it said that when Netflix goes to gaming, they claim that the price when they add gaming will not go up. And I thought, yeah, and pigs will fly. Oh, wait, you know? a, minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know what I'm paying right now? For no. Well, because I want their 4K service. I want to get uh, their 4K streaming. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, it costs me eighteen ninety five a month. Wow. Right. <coughs> and and I think what they did is they inched their way up. You know, when I first signed up, they were seven ninety five. <laughs> Right. Oh, yeah. You know, now, mind you, you have just the streaming service, not also the CD or the DVD. No, no, I don't have the DVD thing or anything. It's just because it, I read that the DVD service actually has sixty percent of their library. That it's a greater number through DVD than it is through streaming. I don't is that the case? think so. I think they 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 for years they've been trying to get rid of the DVD segment. Okay, yeah. uh, but the reason they haven't is because too many people complain when they tried to because they have poor signal yeah, so or, they still if you want to have a service with netflix where you have them mail you a dvd fine right. of course the big problem now is find a dvd player 
Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's right next to my eight track. Yeah. It's right next to your eight track. Yeah. So I, I don't know what, uh, uh, you know, but I think that the other reason why, they, why they're doing badly is I think the price increase was ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't, th I said to Marjorie, I said, you know, if you didn't live with me, I'd get rid of Netflix. They're t they yeah. cost too much. And how, what do I watch on there? You know, uh, I watch yeah. Lucifer and I watch, what else did I watch? I watched a couple other things and that was it. What, is that worth that much money a month? Meanwhile, yeah. over at Disney, I'm only paying, I'm paying uh, six ninety five a month. Plus, I got their package where you get Hulu and you get ESPN Plus, and the whole thing is costing me like eighteen dollars. Okay, but right. simple economics tells me the following: Disney, yeah. Paramount, uh, Discovery are all trying to get a foothold in this market. Once they get their foothold in the market, prices are going to go up to even out. You well, know? what happens is I have, I have, for instance, I have. Paramount Plus. People will say, why? Well, because I got it when it first went up, and they had a deal where if you went and got Paramount Plus, it would only cost you, uh, they would take 50% off for the first year. So basically, I'm paying like four and a half dollars a month. Yeah. Big deal. You know, I fart four and a half dollars. Yeah, right. All right. right. Uh, maybe next year I might have to think about whether I'm going to renew them. Uh, I yeah. can't remember who I had, and I. Oh, a peacock. I you had them for a while, and then I got rid of them. Because mm -hmm. I don't see any reason for it. Yeah. You know, maybe I'm, I would subscribe now because the Olympics are on. Marjorie likes the Olympics. Uh, but then I, as soon as that would be over, I get rid of them again. Let me ask you this question as a fun trivia before we go. And by the way, I might add, I can get a lot of the shows that Netflix has by stealing them. Anyway, yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah we're, yeah, we're not supposed to talk about We're not those. supposed to talk about that, but that is a reality. But it is happening. You know, yeah, it's sort if, of a black market, isn't it? You, well, let me put it this way. They found that if you, um, and they found this in the early days of like video and things like that, if you charge a reasonable price for your product, people aren't going to steal it. They're want, going to want to buy the product. Sure. Okay. Yeah. But if you charge too much, then they're yes. going to go out and steal it. Of well, course. you know, it, 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 they're getting to the point where it's why not steal it? Because they're trying to steal from you. you yeah, know? exactly. They're not making so, their product worse. Here's your trivia question. Of, of all television watching, this mm -hmm. according to the Times, mm -hmm. of all television viewing, what percentage would you imagine is streaming viewing mm -hmm. as opposed to cable, cable channels and so on? Mm -hmm. What percent of television viewing is streaming viewing? Say that again. Sure. Of all television viewing, yeah. you take all the television viewers over a week, let's say. Okay. What percentage of that television viewing is involved in streaming services of some kind as opposed to networks and channels and so on? I on would say it's pretty high. Take a guess. Sixty percent. It's twenty-six percent. Really? Yeah. And Netflix is six percent of all television viewing. You know something? You know why? I'm. I, 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 let me proffer this to you. The reason for that is that uh, it's um, it's because um, people don't want to pay for this stuff. They still are wedded to the fact that regular TV is free. Yeah. That's it, you know? Uh, so I, I, I have, to, have to believe that that's probably the reason why. But mm -hmm. I think as time goes on, we're gonna see uh, the, the networks diminish and all the streaming services. They take. kind of already have. Like, I don't know a show on CBS, honestly. I really don't. I don't. I'm not a well, TV you, guy. Well, you you have to go out there to begin with. In order to watch any of these channels, you have to have the Netflix app on your TV set. You have to have the Hulu right. app on your TV set. Right. A lot of people still have TV sets that aren't capable of having apps. Right. Okay. But when all those TV sets break and they're replaced by the ones with smart TVs, smart TVs, right. they're going to start. You know. So I think that's why it's still low. 
I, I always thought smart TV was something of an oxymoron myself, but that's a personal opinion. Well, you know, I mean, I think, uh, but I mean, it, it, you know, you and I can keep talking because nobody's calling to be on the show yeah, tonight. I'm, I'm here. Nobody's calling to be on oh, the show goodness. tonight. Until I see them, I'm not even going to gonna think about it. The funny thing is, I, I've actually planned to call tonight and do an interview of you, actually, turn the tables on you, and to do an interview of you. You've interviewed so many people mm -hmm. in your life, I thought it would be a fun thing to do. I, you know, I, I, I found, well, I, I, I do get interviewed from time to time by, by reporters and things like that, you know, right. or somebody wants to do an article on me, right. or somebody's writing a... Uh, an essay for something or another, doing a project for high school. You know, I'm right, 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 right. I used right. to be I a big shot when I was in high school. I, no, but I used to be a big shot, but now I'm I'm just regulated, re relegated to high school uh, reporters. Well, uh, let me ask you one. Let me ask you one. Of okay. all the interviews you did mm -hmm. in your career, and you did so many, mm -hmm. of all the interviews you did, who surprised you the most in in the sense of you expected little or nothing, and you wound up fascinated with that individual. Who's that person? I'm trying to think. I, I don't know. I mean, when people ask me uh, uh, who, who was the most interesting interview that yeah, I had. Yeah, that's ever somewhat had. different, though, because you that's, may have that, thought he was that, interesting that going a, in. You know, uh, no, well, I didn't, I knew it was going to be okay. It'd be something, somebody I wanted to interview. Right, but right. I was going to say John Scopes. Oh wow! The Scopes monkey trial. Yeah, holy uh, smoke! I think to this day he is still the most memorable interview I've ever done. Wow! Because what you're doing when that happens is you're interviewing history. Of course, you know, yeah. and uh, and you also find out things you didn't know, like the fact that he actually got paid, right, to be put on trial. You know, right. exactly. Uh, he said, yeah. and he suddenly, as the years went on, he became more of an advocate, just right. purely because yes. he he learned all about it. But anyway, but who was I surprised? What I thought maybe it was going to be a crappy interview. And well, you, you really a, didn't give a hoot about the person either way, and then by the end of the interview, you couldn't get enough of this person. There's usually a person that shocks God, you. I, I, you know, it's hard. I, I really have to. Do some Think thinking. About that to begin with, I've lost most of my memory. <laughs> most of my memory is shot. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh, so, the, consequently, because my memory is shot, uh, it's hard for me right now to recall it. And I'm trying to think, because there's got to be one where I sure. went, oh, God, I don't want to do this. And well, I'm sure it goes the other way, too, right? Where you were excited and pumped up for an interview when the guy turned out, or the woman turned out to be a total dud, you know, where you thought, oh, Jesus, how did I get out of this? Well, uh, the, the, what's his name? The guy that was in My Dinner with Andre uh, and was in The Princess Bride. I'm trying to remember his name now. I wouldn't know. Uh, hold on a second. All right, let, me, let me look it up here. Princess Bride. Uh, Princess... Princess... Bride, I, I'll know it in a second as soon as I see it. Uh, here's the Princess Bride, and his name is, um, hmm. let me see here, Wally Shawn. Do, do you know who Wally Shawn is? No. Kind of a mythos <coughs> guy. Did you ever see Annie Hall? Yes, many and, years and ago. And in the, in the movie, oh, no, not Annie Hall, Manhattan. I saw that and, as well. And uh, Keaton keeps talking about this boyfriend she has. And he has oh, okay. A very sexy okay. name, and then she meets him, and it's this... Okay. Wimp. That's Wally Shawn. And I, when I heard I was going to interview Wally Shawn, I thought, this is great. He was in my dinner with Andre, and he was in The Princess Bride. He comes in. He is the dullest interview. <laughs> that you can Nice guy, but just really dull. So, you know, I'm getting this flop sweat of this This interview's got to come to a close <laughs> soon, you know, because I I can't think of another question to answer, ask that he would answer in any kind of meaningful way. Yeah. You know? Who? And, uh, and, and uh, wait a minute. And, and so, towards the end, uh, so all of a sudden I say, well, thank you so much, Wally, for coming by today. We really appreciate it. And he said, you're getting rid of me? 
Whoa. And I said, well, not really. I, you know, it's just time we have to go to another interview. And he says, I wasn't good enough. Oh, no. Oh, God. So I kept oh. him on for another 20 minutes. Oh, shit. <laughs> Was there anyone in your career that gave you advice that really mattered? Hmm. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, there are people I have had on that have made an impression on me or said something that made me think. Professionally. I remember, I remember T Timothy Leary made me think. Really? Yeah, I, I, I was at a point in my career where I was going to be the big shot. I was the guy who was going to get Timothy Leary in an interview. This was in sure. Houston, Texas. And he completely beat me up. No kidding. Yeah, he just answered every question and just, you know, started, uh, I, I can't begin to give you an example, but two days later I went and tried LSD. That's oh, how my. influential that interview was on me. Are you at all familiar with the ESPN guy, Chris Berman? Does that name ring a bell I for know you? the name. I, I don't. Okay. I would well, not be Chris Berman familiar. was once asked. I thought this was a fabulous answer. Chris Berman in an interview was once asked, what was the best professional advice you ever got? And it turns out, he said, that he went to Brown University and when he graduated, his favorite professor came over to congratulate him and gave him the following advice. And I thought this was priceless. He said, Chris, be pushy, but don't be a pain in the ass. And you'll only you will know the answer, will know the difference. Hmm. Be pushy, but don't be a pain in the ass. And only you will know the difference. And I thought, you know, there's a lot to that. You know, well, those that are a little bit pushy do get, you know, sometimes what I, they I, want. I didn't get this in an interview with him, but I heard him say it on another interview. And that was Steve Allen, who really taught me a lot about interviewing and having guests on a show. Mm -hmm. First thing he said was, when you have a guest on, you're gonna be there tomorrow. They're here today to help you do the show. Wow. Let them work. Don't try right. to top the guest. Right. That's Never great. try to top the guest. If you have a funny guest on, don't try to be funnier than he is. Wow. You know? And if you ever listen to some guys who have comics on their shows, they have a comic on the show and they're always trying to top them with yeah. with their own yeah. joke. And so that's one thing I learned is never top the guest. And wow. he said that, you know, you're going to be here tomorrow. You know, and and if the ratings are going to be good on that show, they're going to be good because that guest helped you. That's you exactly know? right. That's uh, great. So, I mean, Steve Allen's a personal and hero. And his right. other piece of advice was, you don't do an interview, you hold a conversation. Huh. And, and if you listen to the way I interview, I hold a conversation. I don't. I... I've I always, don't have questions that I ask. I've always rated you among the best interviewers I've yeah. ever heard in my life and thought if ever I were in a position to interview people publicly, I would follow your lead. I honestly mean that. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the major rule there is, <coughs> hey, you know, you're going to be here tomorrow, okay? Yeah. You don't have to top anybody, and, uh, you know, you can just hold a conversation. Yeah. Also, by holding a conversation, you're not sitting there like a lot of interviewers do, sitting there in your mind thinking, what's my next question going to be? And while this yeah. person's answering, you're questioning yourself, what's the yes. next question going to be? And you don't hear the answer, which would probably give you the next question. You know what? It, you have the confidence. I, I, I've always sensed that you have the confidence that whichever way it goes, you'll be okay, that you'll be able to follow the lead of whoever it is you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a talent. It's really a confidence that you'll be okay and you don't need a prescribed script to follow because those are are stilted, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's, yeah. The that's other, a, the a other thing. The yours, other thing, sure. and this is, this is a, a uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of different things that I've learned over the years, and one of them I learned from a friend of mine who I worked with and was business partners with, Al Goldstein of Screw Magazine. Sure, sure. Now, guys like Al are always in positions where people are attacking them in interviews and trying to be the heroes, and yeah. then they have to somehow defend themselves. Right. And what 
he taught me how to do is when, like, let's say that people would always ask me the question, well, would you want your kid to read Screw Magazine? Right. And he'd go, no, I don't do Screw Magazine for kids. Right, in the first place. Right? Yeah. In other words, you walk into the answer, you don't mm -hmm. back off of it. Right. And I learned that the best way to, to, to come out in an argument is to admit your fallibilities, you know, mm -hmm. and to not... Not, not. It's it's just kind of like walk into the answer. Don't run away from it. Right. You know. Right. So was anyway. there was there a moment in your career where you realized I think I've made it? Where you stopped worrying about will I be able to do this and you thought, yeah, I think I made yeah, it. Yeah. Right. I think I've got it. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> this interview. <laughs> well, you know, let's be honest. I never really made it. Okay. No, but you were able to decide. I can make. A, I can make a go of this. I can. I can feed feed myself with this and make it a career. I never felt secure enough that I was going to have a job the next day. No kidding. No. no. Wow. But that's show business. I you know. Suppose. I mean, I had a friend. Uh, um, uh, oh, I, I I give you a perfect example. Um, um, who was it? Came into my studio. I'm trying to remember now. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Patrick Stewart. Patrick okay. Stewart comes in and I do an interview with him, right? And uh, after the interview's over, I say, hey, thank you very much, Patrick. I shake his hand and I said, please, anytime you're in New York, come and, and you got something to plug give me a call and let's let's have you back on again and he said mm -hmm. well if they allow me to do another motion picture wow and this was at the height of his career wow you know and i suddenly realized yeah that's that's, that's par for the course you just think that because uh, i got told by a friend of mine uh, chuck mccann years ago that every time he would sign when you were finished doing a movie you had to sign out he said every time he signed out, you didn't know if that was the last job you'd ever have. Holy shit. I've heard similar stories about Olivier, that Olivier was horribly insecure. Mm -hmm. And here we're talking about someone who, I mean, arguably, you could make the case, is among the greatest actors, you yeah. know, in, in the yeah. English language. Yeah. And he has made quotes about the fact that he kind of lived on tenterhooks, wondering if he would get the next job. Yeah. And I thought, Jesus Christ, you know, like if he's worried, what right do any of us have to feel secure? You yeah. know, my goodness. Yeah. So, I mean, it, that, that insecurity always exists. You wow. Know? And it's really nice now being nominated for, uh, you know, admission into the broad Radio Hall of Fame, the broad Radio Broadcasters Hall of Fame. But I don't think I'm going to win. I don't think I got a, a chance. I think it'll be Sally, Jesse, Raphael, which would be fine with me. Mm -hmm. If it's any either of the other two, I would be bothered. But if it's mm -hmm. her, I won't be bothered by it. Did I just hear Larry Elder's running for office somewhere? Yes, he's running for that. governor of California. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. Prick. You're you're in you're uh, you're in thick competition, my friend. Oh yeah, right. He's thick competition. <laughs> You, you compare my career, even as, as non-nationally known as it was, and compare it to Larry Elder's, and I'm sorry, I, I should walk away with the beauty prize, okay? You know. See, listen, I was a New York listener, mm -hmm. and in the early 70s, mid-70s, you were it, dude. You really were. There were people in the, the quote-unquote counterculture Mm -hmm. who sat and listened to your every word. And not only you, mm -hmm. but also the people you attracted. You know, there were nights when Abby was on. There were nights when Jerry was on. There were nights when influential people in the counterculture were on. And in effect, it's where a lot of people who were leaning left in those days were getting their marching orders and understanding, mm -hmm. you know, what the issues of the oh, day listen, were. I, I don't don't for one moment uh, wonder my importance to this business. 
I think I'm more important to this business, however, than I've been credit, given credit for. Oh, no question okay. about it. I mean, so, um, what know, I just said is perfect example of that. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, who, who else is in the Radio Hall of Fame already? Wendy Williams. Okay, yeah, go think figure. It'll, think it all. You know, so, yeah. I mean, you know. Also, it's a contest, but anyway, I guess I better call this to a close. There's only one person waiting to go on here, but, you know, um, do you want to see them? Sure. S somebody you would actually like. Hold on a second. Let me admit him. Hold on. Uh, uh, and let me get rid of your name. My there. man. There he is. There's, uh, there's, uh, uh, there's, there's Jeff. Hi, Jeff. No, your mic isn't on. I know. There um, you go. Putting it on. How are you there doing? You go. Hey, Jeff. Say hello to Robert. Robert, it's really nice to listen to you. It's good to see you, Jeff. I've missed you. You know, you've asked me a couple of questions that I just, you know, the thing about who surprised you? And I know I've got an answer, but my mind lately has been in such a fog. Well, it's the kind of thing you might come up with next week. You know, like all of a sudden it'll pop into your head. Yeah. Oh, that guy. You yeah. know. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure there was somebody where I went, "Oh God, this is going to be a, this is going to be terrible." Right. And he turned out to really be amazing. I'll right. tell you, I kind of liked. Uh, who was that guy? Who was the? Uh, he was the senator, or senator, or congressman, uh, from Texas, who wound up getting in a lot of trouble. Wound up on Dancing with the Stars. I'm trying to remember what his name was. Uh, but he's a Republican. How long ago? Not Ted Cruz. Uh, uh, How long uh, ago? It's about, it's, well, I was when I was doing it. Probably, it had to be about 10, 15 years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 but anyway, uh, he was a Republican, disgusting Republican. Disgusting. Uh, and I had him on, and I thoroughly enjoyed him. Mm -hmm. I liked him. Mm -hmm. He was very affable, self pejorative. Mm -hmm. I had a good time with him, and I went, this can't be, this is not right, yeah. you know. Um, and also, I'll tell you who else I kind of liked, <laughs> this is going to really get you mad. Uh, who was the, uh, the press secretary, the original press secretary that... Uh, oh, the little weaselly guy. No, no, her, a woman. Oh, you mean um, uh, uh, Huckabee, Huckabee Sanders. Yeah, okay, uh, uh, Huckabee, not her. Her oh, father, Mike. My, Mike Huckabee, I had him on. And he was wonderful. Right. He was just, he was affable. He was funny. I enjoyed having him there on the show. And after, you know, towards the end of the show, I said, you know, I hate your politics, but God, I've had a nice time with you. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. You know, and um, it's kind of like somebody pointed out, though, he had to be nice. I said, why is that? So it's like the reason why, oh, I don't know, mobsters have to be nice. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> that's how they win you over. You know, of course. that's how they how they get you on their side. Right. And this well, guy we is live a politician. In a, in over 55 community. And of all the friends I have in this particular community, the person I'm the closest to is a staunch Republican and right winger. Yeah. And I, I, I virtually hate his politics. I think he leans toward racism. And yet this morning, before I left for my procedure, he wrote me an email saying, hope everything comes out OK. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, on a personal level, he's about as sweet as can be. But well, if Mike the subject Huckabee, gets around the yeah. politics, you know, we see stars. Right and I around. had Mike Huckabee on a couple more times for that very reason. Yeah. You know. Uh, so uh, a lot of these guys who we perceive as being horrible, yeah, they're horrible politically. And I consider that a moral misjudgment, okay? Yeah. But on a personal level, you get along with them. You right. know, and it's it's really strange. And you, know, you feel like you're sleeping with the enemy. Yeah, I know. You know. Well, I admire John McCain for that matter. I mean, I, did, I couldn't stand his politics. You but know what I used to say about John McCain? You're going you're gonna to hate me for this. But I used to say... They made such a big deal about what went on, but the thing is, he's a hero for being caught. For being captured, yeah. For being I, captured. I and then but, Trump came along and basically said the and same actually thing. said that. Yeah. But the thing is, you've got to give the guy credit for the fact that he wouldn't yield. 
you know, like when he was in captivity. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I certainly give him that. But he got shot down twice. I mean, that's how bad a pilot <laughs> yeah. he was. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know. But, you know, in the end, if John McCain had won the presidency, I still would have slept at night. You know, when Trump was president, I'd wake up each and every fucking morning and turn on the TV hoping something hadn't blown up. Whereas with John McCain, you know, I, I disagreed with his politics mostly, but I, I would have slept okay. Because in the end, I felt he was a patriot. You know, I felt he cared about this country, and that was just fine with uh, me. That was, yeah, I, when it came to his politics, uh, I, I could have a lot of questions. Me too. Okay. But I always knew that he always cared about this country and would never do anything to hurt it. Right. Okay. There was a moral imperative yeah. on his and part. And so if he had some kind of political standpoint or view that I disagreed with, it perhaps was something he had thought over and mulled over and decided was right for his morality. Exactly. Yeah. And it's okay that I disagree, mm -hmm. you know, so long as I have confidence that we both have the country's best interest at hearts. So we just have two different ways of getting there. Yeah. Oh, wait a oh yeah. turn that down. I brought Who's Brian. this guy? I don't think we've met. <laughs> You're digging all our freaking time, man. In, in fact, yeah, I, guarantee, I, I, I guarantee you, Robert, if anybody joins in tonight who I think will be any problem to you, I will not let them in. Nobody's a problem. Okay. But uh, except maybe special. except maybe this Neary guy. He's yeah. so special. I the, thought he was from New York, man. I thought he was a tough guy. Maybe Alan's right. Yeah, yeah. You, do you know that you and I together are getting more numbers than normally I get with, wow. with you know yeah, ten I people? saw that too and I said, Oh my god, here we go. <laughs> yeah, geez. I won't be able to get in a doorway anymore. Yeah, but anyway, the uh um but you know, I mean that that was an interesting question. God, I, I still haven't come up with an answer about somebody what was the original question? About some the original question was who surprised you when you did an interview where you didn't expect much, but by the end of the interview you found him a fascinating individual. Mm -hmm. And I keep saying Robert, him, it could be a her. Robert um, Natali last week. There you go. There you <laughs> no, go. I I'm trying to think and I can't you know, I, I know there's somebody like that. There's somebody that I went, oh, okay, you know, I, I admit uh, they're, you know, they're pretty good. If you want to leave at any time now, you can. <laughs> but this oh, is oh, 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 so is it me or what? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, because you know what? The numbers will go down a couple people and then he's going to yeah. say, oh, see, when I left. The no, we were up down. to, we were up see, to. See, it's like I come on and Brian's breaking my balls. We were up this to is about. Terrible. We were, we got to make up for all these weeks. <laughs> well, we were up to about 46 people. And since I started bringing people on, it started going down. But that could be because you guys came on and we were, were watching. watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, so Robert, yes, sir. Back to your 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 conversation there with uh, Mr. McCain. I, I'm curious how you feel about Miss Cheney. I, you know, I've had the same kind of thoughts mm. about McCain, and and um, I'm starting to feel the same about Liz Cheney. You know, Kevin, I I I I used to dislike Liz Cheney a great deal. Right, right. I couldn't stand her father. You know, from here to there. But I, she, where, I, go, let, where I'm going to agree it, with you big time yeah. is that I have to give her credit for balls. Uh, exactly. You know, is she, and is she I the always is she admire the balls. Is I really do. She, yeah, but I she, admire somebody that's yeah. principled, even if I disagree with their principles. Is she, I, is she I, the I lesbian? Is she, is she, because is I watched her the other day, or yesterday it was, when she was standing down there on the steps answering questions. That was tough. And I thought, you know what? This this woman's got some huevos. Yeah, and what, what's more is she's taking political risks in order to stand by her principles, exactly. which I think is is yeah, like, where, where else do you find that anymore? It's honorable. Is yeah. she, is she, let me ask you, is she the lesbian daughter? I don't know. Oh, remember, no. remember, Cheney had a lesbian daughter. Yes. I don't know. And I'm it just, doesn't matter. It doesn't but matter. Also, no, no, her, no, she's not the lesbian. That's not the lesbian. Oh. And all, but also her stance being against. It's not just like you're against Pepsi or, or Coke, right? I no. mean, this is this is if you're against that, 
these other people want to storm and kill, right? And stick you on a noose. Yeah. I mean, this, is not, this is not a friendly type. Oh, well, well I like uh, this look, and not this. Look, no, this look, is really look cool. I thought 100%. the same. I thought the same thing about what went on in January six, and then I heard Trump say that it was a love fest. Yeah. <laughs> so True. now I understand it. 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 I. Maybe I looked at it wrong. Maybe because they weren't wearing flowers. Look at it backwards. Yeah, right. Maybe because they weren't wearing backwards. Right. Yeah. But see, there's a clip out there. You guys should go look for it if you haven't seen it already, of Kevin McCarthy on the floor in the House, and he's defiling Trump for his part in having caused the insurrection. Boy. I swear he needed fucking tail lights for how fast he backed and, and now he goes down to Mar-a-Lago and gets his marching orders. Yeah, exactly. So what, see, that's the opposite you, of what I admire. Just, somebody, you know, like it, that's the very opposite of principle. Explain to me, explain to me, if you will, please, I beg of you. What does he have over these guys? I mean, if I did what he did and I lost the way he lost and the, the way in which things came down in the end, uh, every member of my party would disavow me. They wouldn't want to have anything to do with me. How did he manage to hold on to their balls? He's got the majority of the white supremacist vote. He's got the majority of the white I'm afraid the minority is starting to take over the country vote. You know, like this is the segment that Trump tapped into that Republicans had really never given a thought to before. How, how afraid, afraid do you, to go how, against how, how that. afraid do you think there are people in this country of the fact that oh blacks are taking over, the Mexicans are taking over? Oh, I think it's prevalent. Do you think it's really prevalent? Personally, I think it's prevalent. I think there are a lot of people that are afraid that the old days where whites ruled are gone, that they feel like concessions have been made to minorities that aren't afforded to whites and so on. I think there's a building resentment, even among people who are ordinarily live and let live types. I do. Lurking in the woods for a long time and it's finally coming out. Yes, yeah, I That's agree. what's happening. It's been... It's been brewing. It's been, uh, you know, they've been quote unquote training. And <laughs> someone said, okay, it's time to come out now. It's okay to come it's out. It's okay yeah. to come out now. Well, exactly. and, like, uh, and that was uh, Trump, and Trump has done that. And he's, he's let the, you know, he's let the uh, pigs loose. It was strange to me of a, feeling, of, a, of a feeling I've had recently. I always hear a lot about uh, we got to do this for minorities, we got to do that for minorities. And it's always black oriented. And yet I wasn't aware that the only people in this country who've been subjugated to, subject to uh, uh, racism and to the, the disparity in incomes and things like that because of racism weren't just black. They were Hispanic, they were Asian. Uh, I mean, in, in many cases, any, any number of different religions and groups well, and yet, yet, it's all aimed at. Well, we only got to do. We got to get more black voters out. We got to get more. We got to get more vaccinations and black arms. I mean, because because it's been a, a big part of our history, and I think that's that's been the biggest focus. Has mm -hmm. been a, it's been a big part of our history. Yeah. But it's now they're bringing everybody into it. Well, it yeah. doesn't. The blacks seem, are the leaders, I, and then it's bringing in the brown and the and everybody else, the Asians and everything else. I, I wish, they're all being yeah. brought into it. It's just the it's the front end of it. I I'll wish I could. Else. I wish I could say I was as, as certain of that. I think that there's a white man's guilt that just says, "Oh, let's let's do everything for the blacks." You know, that's the way they look at it. And I look at Mexicans right now in this country. Look at the problems they've got. You know. Uh, and and Chinese, when they were building railroads in this country, yeah. uh, were, were were absolute slave labor. Okay, they're and buried in our histories. They're buried in our history. The American Indian, you know, yeah. the, the people who we took this land away from, the way they're still to this day treated, and yet we seem to put all the emphasis on black, and and I think that's wrong. But see, my wife and I taught in a district that was 95% Hispanic. We're not Hispanic, but we right. taught 
in a district that was 95 percent Hispanic. She's now a teacher. She's a teacher taught, too. She was a in teacher. the 70s and 80s. Yeah. They're now assimilated, and the black kids that we taught, which weren't many, are still black. You know, and they can't run or hide from that. Whereas the Alvarezes and the Rodriguezes have pretty much become uh, I don't part know, I don't of the know if if, Mexi America. if Hispanics have been able to assimilate that easily. Either. Oh, Alex, they don't get redlined in you know buying real estate. You don't think they so? don't get denied loans the way blacks do. I mean, there's a. I mean, list. look, I'm not saying that blacks haven't mm -hmm. had a problem in this country uh, forever. I mean, they were freed and then they weren't freed. They were just kind of like you know. You're, you're, you're free, but don't don't come into our neighborhood. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I certainly sympathize with the plight of blacks in this country, but I just think racism is so endemic in this country that we really have to attack all of it, every single inch of it, you know? And I don't think we're doing that. We're kind of going, yeah, well, then there were the Hispanics, and of course the Chinese, you know, they had a little problems. How about the Japanese during World War II in this country? You I know? just don't think I've ever heard someone say, oh, shit, Rodriguez's are moving into the neighborhood, you know, or Wong is moving into the neighborhood. Well, you, but you do hear a president like Trump using them to affect the racist voters that he wants to acquire. Which you know. brings us back to the original point, right? Yeah. Which is he kind of opened that can of worms, and now all the shit is, you know, well, it's I like mean, the let's face it, out. it's a Hitler like tactic because uh, what Hitler did is, oh, you, yeah. is, is you get a group of people, in his case, Jews, but you get, and gypsies, mm -hmm. you, get, you, you, you get a group of people, and then you make them the enemy, and you make them horrible, and yes. you then say, I'm going to rid you of these people. Yes. And I'm going to make your life better because they're not going to be here any longer. Yes. All the problems that you feel you have are because of them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm know, gonna maybe it's because you have no fucking education. <laughs> you know, or maybe it's because, you know, you don't have anything on the ball. But no, yeah. it's because of them. Created them. Uh, what were you saying, Kevin? No, I just commented that, and, and I'm going to fix it. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, that I uh, alone. Well, that's the title of that book about Trump. Yes, I can fix it. I alone can fix it. Yeah, and and uh, you know, I mean, Hitler. I I I had a thought the other day because I was watching a thing about Hitler again. You know, they, to this day, I mean, you got to admit he had some kind of an influence over the 20th century since we never stopped talking about him. You know, right. there wouldn't be an A and E network if it weren't for the documentaries about Hitler. Right, you know. Uh, but my question is, was Hitler take take Hitler the individual? I never could see that he was the main problem. Uh, that I didn't see him as a strong enough person, at least in in his historical past. Uh, you know, lousy painter. But <laughs> you know, he, had, he was an influencer, and he well, had but, but people around him that did shit for him. Well, uh, it, was he more a product of the people around him? Yes. And then he was used as the focal point. Yep. Uh, uh, and and Hence should we really be Trump and his and his goonies? Should we should we have been blaming maybe those other people a little more than we did? You know. Uh, well, you look at the you look at some of these documentaries, and I can't name all the names, but those guys that were sitting right below him were doing the worst stuff yeah. under his quote unquote command. Yeah, Hitler had his Goebbels, and Trump had his Jim Jordans and Tucker Carlson, yeah. and they're still there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but I and mean, notice notice the parallel of how they both denigrated the press, yeah. and kind of made the populist the population believe, don't believe your lion eyes. You know, believe what I tell you is the truth. Wow. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. Hey, look there. We got Adrian here. Hi, Adrian. <laughs> she says, that's Kevin. Hi, Adrian. Oh. <laughs> Kevin and I hung out Sunday. That's, I met Adrian the other day. Doesn't he, doesn't, hey, Adrian? Adrian? Doesn't Kevin wave Kevin? Doesn't he look like Santa Claus? 
<laughs> yeah, see, there's, oh, I don't know if you can see, there's Kevin and Adrian and I. Uh, next, next to Brian's cool car. Yeah. Oh, oh, really? You got together. See, you guys out in California getting uh, uh, getting together behind my back. <laughs> yes. Oh, we're waiting for you to come, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Wow. So. Okay. Say good night. Say good night, guys. Good night, guys. Good night, oh, oh no. Hello. <laughs> okay. Hello. <laughs> yes. Bye. No. Bye. <laughs> no. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. bye. You want to be grounded? Bye. Uh -oh. Bye. Oh. Uh oh. Okay. Don't forget Santa's here. She's not. She's not closing. <laughs> look, look, you. I know. Look, 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 looking okay. back at you. <laughs> Hold on, let me yell at her. <laughs> oh, that was effective. Did you yell at her? <laughs> no. How can you can't deny her anything? Can you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the door crack. There's your answer. <laughs> she's also funny too. Oh man! You know, those little girl tactics. Oh, she's adorable. Yeah. I had two of them. What? I had two of them. Yeah. Now how? Uh, you, tactics. How old are your kids now, Kevin? Oh, uh, my one daughter's twenty. No, shit, twenty-eight. Wow. My other daughter's sixteen. Yes, there is a gap. Yeah. Okay. Which one was the hardest one to raise? The first one? Both of them. Both of them. Okay. <laughs> and right now, girls. right now, the sixteen-year-old is a point. The boy was not a problem. Oh yes, there was a boy too. Yeah. How He's old? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Yeah. God, how well, thirty-six? Sorry. I keep saying. I can't how, keep track of it. How old are you? But you got to be over sixty-five, right? I'm sixty-four. Yeah. Sixty-four. Mm -hmm. Wow. I had Sarah when I was 48, 50, something like that. Really? Wow. Right around the same time uh, Brian's going through his deal. But anyway, so, so I, was, I was just thinking about Hitler, and uh, I, I kept saying, I just don't believe one man could have that much power. That there had to be, he had to be almost like <clears throat> a puppet that they were putting up there in front of the public, and everybody else was doing the real evil stuff. I don't think Hitler said build a concentration camp. I don't. I don't know that a, one person needs to be that. I powerful. think one people. I think it's mob I, psychology. I think one person can be that evil, but I don't think oh, Hitler. Yeah. I don't think. Hitler, I think it's mob psychology. I think. I, well, I don't think Hitler was. Do you, do you think Hitler was smart? Mm -hmm. Did you do think he was smart? Um, I think he was politically savvy. I think he knew which. Did you, do you to think push. Goebbels was smart? Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I do. No, I wouldn't say they were smart. They were evil people. Um, Hitler was like a Jim Jones kind of person. He he had a, a you know, mysterious cult. But, yeah, but why? Why? I mean, he had a silly looking guy with a funny mustache. I often claimed. <laughs> Well, that, same question that, to Trump. How did one, Trump do oh, it? Here's what, here's what I claimed once, and I was talking once to a historian about this. And hello, Charlene. Uh, the historian, I, the historian said that I might have had a point there. I believe that Hitler modeled his look after the most beloved character in the world, Charlie Chaplin, at the time. Oh, yes, yeah. because it was interesting when Charlie Chaplin decided to play Hitler, essentially mm -hmm. in the, in the, in he the was. great dictator. He didn't have to change the look of the character at all. Nope. <laughs> and that Hitler said. I'm going to model myself after Hitler because he is, in fact, you know, the uh, the most beloved character in the world. Because that's the only way he could possibly have come into that kind of power, looking that goofy. You know, a friend of mine put up a Facebook meme that said the only difference between Jim Jones and Donald Trump is that Donald Trump charges you for the Kool-Aid. <laughs> 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 uh, that that that, uh, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I'll tell mm -hmm. you. Um, but it it's it just that I, 
in, in, in the case of Trump, I honestly believe Trump is that evil. I honestly believe Trump is Machiavellian and batshit crazy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean batshit crazy. I don't mean just oh he's a little goofy like the rest of us and irrepressible. Yeah. No, he's, he's batshit crazy. He's dangerous. Totally. Yeah. Did you hear that interview with him? Yeah. Where they? Uh, yeah. From that new book. Yeah. 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 It was a nice. It was a happy fizzies party they were having down yeah. there. He's out of his mind. Mm -hmm. just, you know, I can't believe that. His narcissism is just off the charts. It yeah. really is. I mean, and the fact that the military, they talk about the military just being afraid that he was capable of trying to get them to do something <laughs> uncalled for. And what were they going to do if asked to do it? And they pretty well decided they would all quit. That's what they decided. They, they were ready to do what I call the Argentinian approach. <laughs> Really, because they did it. Yeah. They got rid of the president, yeah. and the military ran the country for I don't know, five years or something like that. Well, you I imagine mean, that. Yeah, I mean, we could have had that kind of situation happen. Yeah, in that press conference the other day, they said we were we're prepared to defend the Constitution, and they made it very clear that that's what they're there for. Yeah, and that was it. They weren't answering no more questions. We we're here to defend the Constitution and nothing political. That's it. it no more basically, questions. Basically, uh, I think it was what, what's his name, uh, uh, Miley or Miley or whatever Milley. his name is. Mark Milley. Mark Milley. Mark Milley. Yeah. Who was embarrassed, by the way, if I remember yes. correctly, when Trump took his little PR walk yeah. to the church. Yeah. Yeah. Milley was he with apologized. that group, and he apologized for being with that group. Oh, yeah. now we got we got the cutest girl in America and her mother, my, the cutest mother my, in America. My oldest daughter. Oh, is that your daughter? I thought that was your My wife. Daughter. I couldn't see her. Hello. <laughs> she just got home. She had, uh, we had a long day, you know, saving uh -huh. the world for COVID. Oh, really? Uh, what are we going to do about this COVID thing? God, it is just getting out of hand again. Keep getting tested. That's all I ask. <laughs> we, you, you, Keep getting you, tested. <laughs> yeah. You know what they did? Um, uh, the, the, I read the. I, I think I told the story last night. This uh, story in uh, online about this doctor in like Missouri or some one of these places that's really been affected by it, who said he can't tell you the number of people who he's had to put on ventilators, and just before he puts them on ventilators, they say, "Can't you give me the vaccine?" Yeah. yeah. And he says, "A little late." Yeah. You know, it's too mm. late for that. It's not prophylactic. It doesn't cure. Alex, their dying word is, can I have the shot, right? Yeah, the dying yeah. word is, can I have the shot? Too late. You know, I mean, uh, it's it's sad what's happening. But, you know, come on. The, the vaccine's out there. Go get it. And I think if anything's going to turn this around, it's that people are suddenly beginning to realize that by not having the shot, they're vulnerable to death. Plain and simple, you know, and and it's it's horrible, you know. Yes, this, John. This bullshit that the Republicans are claiming that the Democrats are covering up the uh, origin of um, where it came from, total bullshit. Yeah. Nobody well, that was that was Rand Paul from. with his argument with Fauci, and Fauci finally just took him to the woodshed. Oh. And said, "You're sure. a lot. You know, you're you're calling me a liar. You're the liar. You're the person spreading the mistruths." Yes, right. And Biden had the best. Well, one of my favorite lines last night he says, "There's a pandemic amongst non vac about non-vaccinated people." Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Your your microphone. Mic's somewhere. off. Your mic is mic off. Your, your, your mic, mic went blank. Your mic is off now. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. My God! Did yeah. you hear me? Oh. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, I can hear you now. <laughs> There's a pandemic, uh, you know, amongst the the non-vaccinated people, and that's true. You know, they have a huge percentage that are all non-vaccinated, and like you guys are saying, they had some lady on CNN today crying on the air thingy and saying, "Oh yeah, I had it. Now I want the vaccination, and my family, I'm trying to get them." Yeah. Well, our, our percentage has gone up here in New York, but our hospitalizations are down. And the amount of people, we only had two people die yesterday. Hey, the, but the part for me, <clears throat> excuse me, the part for me that's being under talk, talked about is the fact that 
some people say, well, I'm vaccinated, so I don't care what they do. Well, you should care what they do because variants occur in hosts. You know, like the va the variants don't occur in thin air. Right. They occur because the, the COVID has a place in which to mutate. And yeah. so if everyone gets vaccinated, there will be no more variants. And I think that's being underreported or underspoken about is that in effect, you're giving the COVID a chance to mutate and strengthen, you know, so we are vulnerable. That yeah, bounce back and forth. And then that's when it's mutating is as it's going through the carriers. Right? Well, they say now that the chances of us who have been vaccinated getting it, forget the people who have had the Johnson and Johnson, that's still kind of up for debate. But people who, like us, who have been vaccinated, our chance, we can still get COVID, but what people are getting is just a bad cold, or at the very maybe, worst, a little Maybe more. that's for you, but I think I'm a little bit more risky. Okay, you're a little bit more risky, but you're not going to die from it. Even, <laughs> they, even, have a, they have a video of a guy from Vegas, and his shirt, the back of his shirt says, vaccinated and ready to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what? In Vegas. Yeah, what? In oh. Vegas. Well, well, uh, Jeff, though, you Jeff, you had a question about that? About what um, I was saying? What, what was I was saying that, no, where I was saying that if you're vaccinated and you oh. do get COVID, you're still not going to get it full, full force. Yes. I mean, that's the natural strategy that everybody understands from the yeah. scientific approach. you may still get it yeah, yeah you can still get it and you can you can have a rough life and you may die well no no but if you've been vaccinated you're not going to yeah there's a tiny chance but not very big well they say that 99.5 percent of the people who are vaccinated have not come down, have not died of COVID. Right. Mm. Okay, that's a pretty good statistic. I'm willing that's to go right. along with that. That's right. But I'm still trying to figure out who fucked up. Was it Johnson or was it Johnson? Johnson. Well, you mm. know, what it is, they've got a, they've got enough of a problem with that. They've got another problem with the opioid thing they got to pay off. Right, right. <laughs> uh, right. There's what, 12 trillion? Is it 12 billion? Mm -hmm. How much money was it? It's is I don't remember. Is maybe... Johnson and Johnson? Do they are they involved? In oh that? yeah, oh yeah, they're the first name on the list. They're always a mess, change. Mm. They've done the... other things. God, yeah, the talcum powder. Thing. I'm sorry, but I wonder if I was really being protected when I put those bandages on me. Right, <laughs> yeah. bandages. The bandages. Yeah. Yeah, the little Snoopy protected you. I think the, the little Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. God, we don't we live in strange times? Oh. Marjorie oh, every night says to me, this world is so fucked up. <laughs> she mm -hmm. said, can it get any worse? You know, she hears about a shooting in Chicago. She hears mm -hmm. about some flood in Europe. She hears about another mm -hmm. flood in China. I mean, it just, we have a world of hurt right now. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, who do I have to blow in order to get on that rocket out of here? Yeah. <laughs> really? I mean, uh, you know, on the other hand, I'm still pissed at Bezos. So, yeah. Because <clears throat> he didn't die? No. Well, that's that too. But, uh, no, you know, I mean, he just cheapened the word astronaut. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes a, it takes a little more bravery to be an astronaut, to do the things some of those people did. Can you imagine, think of Alan Shepard, the first guy who went up in a suborbital flight. Hmm. How brave was he? How brave <laughs> was Neil Armstrong and, and uh, the rest of the crew that went to the moon? I mean. Yeah. And they all had years and years of training. They're all in the, either Air Force or, you know, flying experimental. They were all test yeah. pilots. Test yeah. pilots. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, this guy goes on an amusement ride and calls everybody that was with him an astronaut and gives them little wings. That's like Adrian gets stickers after dance class. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. The wings out. <laughs> you know, and, and quite frankly, I don't think they were brave at all. I'd be happy to go on that, uh, that, uh, that ride, you know, 
it's just two steps away, uh, two steps ahead of a roller coaster. You know, really, and probably as long a ride <laughs> as a roller coaster. You know, so I mean, I just I, uh, that galled me. That really bothered me this week. You know, I mean. Yeah, I love seeing rockets take off. I love the fact, and they got those big bay windows in there. Have you seen that? It was like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, hey, and they're all floating around. And somebody says, uh, or Bezos says, "Oh, hey, look out the window." <laughs> you mean you know? You it's these... kind of it was kind of funny watching them when after it landed, <laughs> the first guys got up there and they went running up to the side of it and they're looking in the window and they're knocking on it, going, "Hey, mm. you okay?" When you looked at it before, when those guys came down and they came into the ocean, and yeah. then they took them out, and nobody would go near them, and they had, you know, detectors all over them, and <laughs> yes, then they stuck them yes. into a bubble and they set them off for a week into a capsule. They were quarantined. Yeah, stay away, you know, they weren't going to touch anybody, and yeah. and here they are cracking the door open and come on out now, everybody gather around, and it was it was pretty funny. Actually, to watch it was all so that nice inside happen. there. I would have stayed inside for a while. The only yeah. thing they did to, for safety was ground the damn thing. How, how far yeah. up did it? they go? They huh? went up 63 huh? miles. Yeah, 62 or 63 miles, that's and that it? was it. 63. Just a sub-orbit. That's enough. Yeah, they that's, went up and they came way, down. That's, that's outside the stratosphere, right? Yeah. Just, just barely. That's and I barely said, that, I and said this last... Hung, I said they this were coming last, down, and that's when they were floating, and then they yeah. entered the atmosphere. I again. said this last night, too, and I'll say it again. What kind of obsession does Bezos have with penises? Uh, have, right. you, have you seen the Amazon logo? Yeah, my <laughs> wife said that years ago. She and goes, that looks like a big dick. And that's what my wife said. Most <laughs> women say that when they see the Amazon logo. And a long time ago, they're painted yeah. along the 53-foot truck. It looked like a big dick. And did you see what this rocket looked like? Yeah. It looked just like mm -hmm. a big dick. Yeah. You know. Dildo on fire. Yeah. Going north. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, you, Jeff Bezos, do you want to lay down and talk to us about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, I mean, what is what this obsession with penises? Yeah. Uh, I, I really was, uh, you know, but I, uh, I mean, yeah, say, hey, we're going up and this is going to be fun and uh, fine, you know, and uh, thanks to my crew for being here. And they weren't even really a crew. I mean, a crew does stuff, you know. One guy's <laughs> looking at the oxygen levels, and another one is doing this, another one is doing that. These guys were just sitting there basically, I don't know, probably reading magazines till the thing took off, you know. And Listen, I did a colonoscopy today. I should get a sticker that says Deep Sea Diver or something. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do they, what, they put you out, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the most marvelous time in my life, I think. Oh, I got mine right here from Kaiser. My my uh, do the poop and stick a little stick in there, get a little uh, chunk on it, and send it off to them. I got that too. Right <laughs> here. What are they yeah. collecting shit over at Kaiser? Yeah, yeah. I told yeah. you guys before. I've had to sign off documents at my company, and they have they have the samples, and they have this is too little. They have a picture of it with just a little bit of poop. And then they have this one is too much, <laughs> they have the big chunk, and then the other one is just right. I so would, to, I oh, would but, if they yeah. asked me to do that. Almost I, as good as the picture of the, the commercial with the box following the lady yeah, along. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. To be box. honest with you, the to, box. to be honest with you, I think you should get dog shit and no, put it in just to they, see what. If, if they sent me that, I would <laughs> simply, I quick. would simply <laughs> exude a huge turd and put it in the envelope. You know, there we the go. nerve, the nerve. Oh. Hey, listen, thanks, Robert, for sticking around That's here. Because a while my back, pleasure. there was, was nobody calling. Everyone. So, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, oh, we'll do it again next week. Okay. Great. Uh, uh, Jeff, great having you here. Uh, thanks uh, for for join being the first one to join us tonight. Uh, thanks to John Larkin for being the second one to join us. The third one that joined us was Brian, and the fourth one that joined us was Kevin, and finally there was Charlene. I think I got them in the right order, right? I don't want anybody to be upset with me. Well, I need you all to vote for me for, you know, the Hall of Fame. Anyway, that's it. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, Good night, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Okay, there they go. 
And uh, Jack Bishop is next with The Intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. Uh, that's pretty much it for me. Um, yeah, at the beginning of the show tonight, I was going to say, I'm not going to take any, doing a show tomorrow night because nobody was calling. But people did start calling, and we had a pretty nice little show. And I thank you, everybody, for doing it. And I also thank Robert for sticking around, too. Uh, hey, that's it for tonight. <laughs> what the hell? I'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, if you haven't been vaccinated, you're an idiot. Go get vaccinated, for Christ's sake, you moron.